Good morning guys. We're going to draw a little plan. Just like we're going to do a miniature load calculation, kind of run through it and see what it looks like. We're going to be using our older materials that I've used on occasion. But I'm going to replace these materials with some new stuff. A lot of my manuals were destroyed during the fire. So I'm going to get some new ones. This material, even though it is old, we'll look at it here. It is old. Based on ASHRAE guide. And you could tell it's old from the style of writing, but it still is very good material and will give you the correct information. But I want you guys to see it how you're going to see it in your everyday life. So I'm going to order some more modern stuff so it looks very similar to what you'll be doing when you're doing low calculations on your own. So what I'm going to do is when I draw it, I use this graph paper. And typically if I have a small area, I'll do a one block equals two linear feet. So let's do just like a 14 by 20 room. So what I'll do is I'll just measure it out. I'll pick a corner here, you know, and I'll have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's our 14 because seven times two is 14. Then we'll do our one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. On a smaller room like this, we could actually enlarge the scale a little bit. So let's try that. So that's how it would look with two blocks. Let's do double the scale. Let's do one block equals one foot. So we'll do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. We have our 20 scale, bring it down here, round out our corners. What I typically do is I'll find a way to draw a straight edge. I had my ductilator to draw a straight edge. I don't see, that no, was right here. I'm gonna come along the side and just make sure it looks nice and neat. And of course there are computer programs that you can do this with right draw, but I'm so familiar with doing it just by hand. It's easier for me and more comfortable for me. But we might get into some of those as well. But I think if we understand it on a sort of older scale, it's easier to understand the more modern stuff. Same way I feel about gauges and all that good stuff. You know, if you understand the principle, it's easier to do everything else. So let's say that we're gonna keep this room very simple. We're gonna use some of, it's a, let's say it's an older outbuilding on a house and they're gonna put a mini split in it or something like that or I used to live in a little 14 by 20 building on my parents' property when I was coming up. It's sort of a way to be independent, yet not independent. A restroom would have been nice. So let's say we walk around it and there's three windows. And there, the windows are, let's see. Now you come up on these old wooden windows, look like this. Excuse my drawing. So it looks something like that. Wooden windows, single pane. And that's how we measure them from here to here, and they're two foot wide. We measure from here to here, and they're five foot. So how we write that down is we'll write 2O by 5O. Two feet, zero inches, five foot, zero inches. So we'll draw, in fact, let's say there's two of them. They're two foot, so we know they're two foot wide. And you can measure to get the scale, like you measure off the end of the house, and say from here to the first window is four foot. Same thing on the opposite side. Let's say one, two, three, four, five. From here to the next window is five foot. Then that window will be two foot wide. Same thing on the other side. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so there's our four windows. Remember in there, they're going to be single pane. And let's say they're unshaded. Unshaded just means no blinds, no trees. You know, if, if a window is facing a tree, it's similar to it facing north since it doesn't get any direct sun. But we'll say this direction here is north. Obviously, then that's south east and west. So our biggest load is on our east-west glass 
the least amount of load is going to be on our northern glass. Let's say we have a vented. Let's say we have a vented attic, like this. That you have like your gable. You don't have to draw the attic in. I'm just going to sort of do a simulation. I leave the. I don't do this three dimensional deal. I keep it two dimensional. But just to sort of give you an idea, here's a vented attic. And it's going to be the same square footage as far as our ceiling height. We'll just know that it's a vented attic. And let's say there's four inches of insulation. So write down vented attic, four inches of insulation. And we're just talking about regular bad insulation or we'll even do like a, you might find cellulose or something like that in an older house. All right, so that's our ceiling's gonna be vented attic, four inch insulation on the ceiling, not on the attic joist, or not on the rafters, on the, on the actual ceiling joist. So what about our walls? Let me, let me pick out a wall here for us. Mm -hmm. We'll say it's brick, insulated, two inches of insulation, which is like an R6 or R8, and this is gonna be like I said, an older building. Two inches of insulation. Brick veneer. All veneer means is it's just the what's on the outside of the building. Think of it as like the the clothes for the building, the veneer. Just like a veneer could be siding or brick or a hardy plank or something like that. Alright, so there's our walls. We already know what our windows are single pane. Let's see. What about our floors? We'll do the same thing. We'll say the floors are wood floors over a vented crawl space with another two inches of insulation. So wood floors, vented crawl, two inches of insulation. Okay, so we have our building elements right here. We're gonna skip all the other stuff. I know you're saying there's no door. We, we will go ahead and put one on there. So a door, we'll put a door right here. Three foot wide. Same way we write the other ones. Typically doors are around 3.0 by 6.8. There's our door. We'll say our door is, hmm. We'll say our door is a non-weather stripped door with no storm door. Guys, we move on to page two and I kind of tidied it up a little bit here. We have our building drawn. We have a few square footages we're gonna get. And then we have some heat loss and heat gain multipliers to figure out. So let's look at the building here. And the first thing is the floor square foot. Well, we're 14 foot by 20 foot. So that puts us at 280 square feet. So I'm gonna go ahead and write that in. Our ceiling square foot and flooring square foot will be the same because our we're gonna have a flat ceiling. We'll do a different div video to figure out how we get the area of a vaulted ceiling. Our gross wall square foot. What that is is just the area of the wall. So we didn't mention it. We'll, we'll say our wall height is eight foot. So our ceiling height in our rooms is eight foot. So what we're going to do is we're going to figure out how many linear feet go around this building. And that's 20 plus 20 is 40 plus 14 is 54 plus 14 is 68. So we have 68 linear feet, so we're going to just multiply that out. 68 linear feet times 8 foot ceilings. Basically the area of our walls. I'm going to need a calculator. My phone's my calculator and I'm using it. Damn it. Our gross wall square foot is 68 times 8, which is 544. Now to get our gross win or window square foot, 
we're going to add up each window, which is going to be two foot by five foot, and we multiply that by four. Two foot by five foot is ten, so ten times four is forty. So each window is ten square feet, so we have a total of forty. Our door square foot is 30 by 68. A lot of times I'll plug in 21 because it's 30 by 70, but we'll get an exact number here. So we're multiplying 3 times 68. Now 68 is 6 foot 8 inches. So you can't write 6.8 because a decimal point eight is not the same as 6, 6, 8 in a feet and inches sort of way. So what I'm going to do is 8 out of 12, which is 8 inches out of 12 inches in one foot, it's about, it's about 0.67, so we're going to use 3 times 0.67. I'm going to multiply that out on my little sheet right here. What we'll do is we'll just go with 20, which is really close. And you see going with 21 is pretty close. But if you want to just use 20 for a normal door, the actual number is 20.01. So what we're going to take is net wall square foot. And we're going to take 544 and subtract 20. Or subtract 40, which is 504. Another 20 which makes 484. So that is the actual wall square footage once we take all the doors and windows out of it.